Hi there, my name is Daniel Green and I'm a postdoctoral research associate based at the National Green Infrastructure Facility at Newcastle University within the United Kingdom. This presentation will focus on monitoring bioretention cell performance using a series of heavily monitored lysimeter systems conducted as part of the EPSRC funded project Urban Green Dams. Within this presentation, I will take you through the details of the commissioning and the setting up of the bioretention cell lysimeters, discuss the instrumentation and the monitoring of the infield systems, and also present some results obtained from the pilot scale experiments. I will then highlight some areas for planned future work. So to provide some context, sustainable drainage systems and green infrastructure are a widely used and effective method of managing road runoff and slowing water movement through urban landscapes and this helps to reduce the strain on traditional grey infrastructure systems in managing stormwater runoff. Although continuous high resolution monitoring data is incredibly valuable in providing a much needed evidence base to aid hydrological modelling of green infrastructure systems, these long established and high resolution monitoring studies are seldom conducted. Therefore, there's a real urgent need to establish large scale monitored systems. Commissioning of the pilot scale vegetated bioretention systems took place in early 2020 and the systems were actively monitoring from August 2020 onwards. Four identical raised lysimeters separated into two hydrologically isolated cells of one meter by two meter surface area were filled with a one meter deep engineered subsoil profile. The drainage component consisted of a 180 millimeter layer of drainage base and this was made up of a coarse drainage aggregate with large drainage voids and a 120 millimetre layer of finer gravel transition layer to prevent the movement of fine sediment through the soil profile and into the outflow. Land drain piping was also installed within this coarse drainage layer to allow free drainage to the, towards the outflow and the outflow unit was fitted with a tip and bucket flow gauge to quantify outflow discharge. The drainage layer was overlain by a 700 mm layer of sud substrate to sustain vegetation growth and also to attenuate storm water. A network of points and profile sensors, as shown in this diagram, were placed at varying locations and depths within the soil profile to measure critical soil parameters, including soil volumetric water content. This dense array of sensors aims to quantify any variations and trends within the soil profile. The lysimeters were also fitted with other key instruments to quantify inflow precipitation entering into the lysimeter cells, and also an on-site central weather station was used to measure in situ weather conditions, used for the estimation of reference evapotranspiration rates. The Lysimeter Data Logger automatically uploads all project data in real time to the publicly available NGIF data app, which can be visualised by visiting ngif.ncl.ac.uk. Data is also archived under the following data licence. Four different vegetation scenarios were investigated to understand the influence of vegetation on bioretention cell performance and also to determine any variations associated with evapotranspiration. The scenarios that we investigated included a bare earth unvegetated control shown to the right of this picture, which was used to represent a control condition with zero transpiration losses and no interception associated with any vegetation covering the lysimeter surface. An amenity grass coverage shown in the left of this picture maintained at a constant height of 12 centimetres to capture a short crop evapotranspiration scenario. Now this closely resembled the short crop reference vegetation detailed within the FAO 56 Penman Monteith standardised methodology. And then also we had two tall crop scenarios of approximately 50 centimetres in height vegetated with Iris Sibirica and Deschampsia sespitosa. These were planted according to local suds guidance documents at a density of 11 plants per 2 meters squared lysimeter cell. Vegetation height and density of these two tall crop species varied throughout the growing season, but they reached a maximum height of about 0.5 meters in the summer months. Now this was due to the perennial nature of the species, with plant growth dying back seasonally and producing new growth in the spring. 
Further, within each of the lysimeter cell pairs, different outflow configurations were explored to determine the effects of outflow control devices on maximising suds soil storage potential. So firstly, cell A featured an orifice restriction outflow device highlighted in the red box here, and this was used to limit outflow to a greenfield runoff rate threshold of 0.2 litres per minute. In comparison, cell B featured an unrestricted outflow, allowing completely free drainage and therefore relying on the suds soil profile for any attenuation or retention effects. So the aim of comparing these two outflow scenarios is to establish the extent to which this strategy might help to reduce outflow volumes and also maximise soil storage uh, during high intensity rainfall events that exceed this greenfield runoff rate. And when we look at the bare earth lysimeter uh, outflow data, we can see that the outflow restriction threshold has been exceeded on three separate occasions since the orifice restriction devices were fitted to the cell B outflows in April 2021. Now these are following very high intensity rainfall events as well. Now let's move on to a snapshot of the monitoring data from the lysimeters. So these plots show a section of monitoring data for the lysimeter vegetated with Iris sibirica during the period 1st of August 2020 to the 20th of November 2020 to provide an idea of how these systems respond to rainfall events. Here we can see the link between soil and climatic parameters and the relationship between inflows, storages and outflows. So inflow and precipitation are aggregated into daily values and volumetric water content data from the various depths throughout the soil profile are presented to show trends associated with depth. The green line shows a sensor placed at 50 millimetres in depth, representing very near surface conditions. The blue and red lines show sensors which are situated in the middle section of the suds soil profile at 300 millimetres and 500 millimetres respectively, whereas the dark blue line is deeper within the soil column and within the fine gravel transition layer at 750 millimetres. So we can see that higher soil water storage expressed as volumetric water content uh, as a percentage and outflow ro rates are associated with increases in inflow and temporal variations are apparent throughout the periods associated with inflows of rainfall. Longer moisture retention periods, higher moisture content associated with increase in soil water storage and also less pronounced fluctuations are also observed with an increase in soil depth. During this period, reference Penman Monteith evapotranspiration recorded at the weather station was minimal, with losses less than one millimetre per day during this period presented. The influence of outflow restriction in the bare earth lysimeter is very apparent within this diagram, showing a heavy rainfall event earlier in the month. A total of 141 litres entered each of the bioretention cells A and B during this week-long observation period, and we can see that whilst both outflow configurations recorded roughly the same volumes of water being evacuated into the sewer network, the timing and the magnitude of outflows are very much different between each of the scenarios. We can see that discharges within the restrict outflow are capped to below the greenfield runoff rate of 0.2 litres per minute, and flows are more prolonged and attenuated following the influx of this short duration storm event. Whilst the unrestricted outflow has a very much uh, flash, flashy and rapid onset peak with a delay of approximately one hour following the peak of the rainfall event. The volumetric water content for 20 centimetre depth shows clear differences in the soil water between each of the cells, but the trends are very much similar. As we saw in the previous slide, Using a single volumetric water content reading to represent total soil storage doesn't provide an accurate depiction of total soil water within the cell. So when we divide the soil up into these profiles based on the sensor locations, this accounts for any heterogeneity in soil water and travel times across the soil profile. And then we find that the total soil storage plus outflow closely resembles inflow precipitation. So here we have 0.8 litres of unaccounted for water, which is likely the amount lost by evapotranspiration during this period. So in conclusion, four large scale lysimeters have been commissioned to investigate spatiotemporal soil atmosphere interactions and to allow changes in relation to rainfall events to be observed. 
Results have demonstrated the effectiveness of bioretention systems at managing urban flows, and ongoing work will continue to look at the influence of vegetation planting styles and their comparative evapotranspirative behaviours. Future work will look at runoff simulation um, and ap the application of augmented high flows to understand how these systems work outside of the instrumented record and to account for runoff from surrounding catchment areas. Thank you so much for your attention. I welcome any questions or comments during the interactive Q&A session following this presentation. If you would like to hear more about the Urban Green Dams project, my colleague Simon Deville will be presenting our work using monitored laboratory-based soil columns in ICUD session 12.4. Otherwise, please feel free to contact me via email or check out any of the links or resources on this slide.